All right, hey everybody. This is your uh, first lesson for, um, what is it, aerospace engineering. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna post this one lesson every week. Um, it'll be due the next week. So um, what we're gonna start doing now in distance learning is we're gonna talk about the next unit in aerospace engineering, which is orbital mechanics. So the first thing we're gonna do when we look at orbital mechanics, we're gonna kind of look at it from a historical perspective. What were some of the theories about this? Now. We're gonna call it orbital mechanics, but most of the theories you're gonna look at um, are called the laws of like planetary motion and stuff like that. Because up until the 50s, um, when we launched the first satellite, then everything that was in orbit was actually a natural thing called a planet or something like that. So let's actually take a look. I have a really short, like two slides to show you about um, orbital mechanics. So we're gonna start with those and then I'll talk about what your assignment's gonna be. So here's the slideshow. Uh, orbital mechanics, we're looking at this toward the historical perspective. So in order to talk about his orbital mechanics, we need to talk about what an orbit is. Now, on the, and now next week, we're going to be talking about what um, like the physics behind orbit. So I have a nice, good presentation to give you then. Uh, we'll do on the video and um, you can see that. So um, an orbit is the motion of one body around another body. Now we're gonna use body because things are different, right? The earth, which is a planet, orbits around the sun, which is a star, right? The moon orbits around the earth. Satellites orbit around the earth. So body just means something with mass. And now usually they're pretty more massive than like your body, but that's what it means when we say body. So an orbit refers to the motion of one body around another one. Although not always the case, um, most of the time, one of those bodies is way more massive than the other one in the case of the sun being bigger than the earth or the case of the earth being bigger than um, a GPS satellite or something like that. One of those bodies is really big and one of them is really, is, it's not always smaller, but it's relative to the big object, very small. Okay, so when that is true, then what we say is we say that the small object is orbiting around the bigger object. Um, when we kind of assume that the larger object is fixed in space, even though it's not, right? So when we talk about a satellite orbiting the Earth, obviously um, the, the satellite and the Earth, that system together are both themselves orbiting the sun. And the sun and that whole system together is itself orbiting the Milky Way. So it's not really true, but that's how we're going to think about it for most of the math that we're going to do um, when we get to the physics part. Okay, so... Usually when you hear the word satellite, you think of something that was man-made, that was put into orbit, and is out there in space, you know, bouncing your cell phone calls, giving you cable TV, and helping you find directions in your phone, things like that. But that's actually the origin of the word satellite. The origin of the word satellite was to describe the orbiting object. So you have the main object and you have a satellite, right? So the sun would be the main object, the earth Mars, Jupiter, uh, Neptune, those are all satellites of the sun. And when we have the earth, we have the moon, which is a satellite of the earth. And so that word satellite means anything that orbits a larger object. Now, since we've been putting smaller objects into space to orbit the earth, we call those satellites because that's what they are. But Technically, the like full term, if we wanted to be really precise about it, would be like man-made or artificial satellites. But satellite will do for us. Um, keeping in mind, again, that's the end. Of, that's all the notes that I have. So I'm gonna go back to the. I'm gonna go back to me. Hey, there I am. So what I would keep in mind is that when we talk about satellites, we are mostly going to be talking about artificial satellites that orbit the Earth. But for this lesson, when we're looking at the historical perspective, we're going to be looking really far back in time. And obviously, they weren't thinking in terms of things orbiting the Earth. They were thinking th things in terms of things orbiting the sun, or in the case of the first couple guys, possibly the sun orbiting the Earth, right? So let me just tell you what we're going to do for the assignment because you're going to learn more by doing the assignment than you are going to be by me gapping here and you have a week to get it done and as it is i don't think it's that much work but i do want everybody to get done again everything in this quarter is going to be graded pass fail 
So get it in, you get 100, don't turn it in, you get a zero until you do turn it in. That's how I'm gonna run it. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a look and you're gonna look up five guys. I know they're all guys because it's history and you know how it is. All right, first guy, Aristotle. All right, you're gonna look up Aristotle. Second guy, Copernicus. The third guy is a guy named Tycho Brahe. Tycho, see what well, it's spelled right there. I'm gonna put it on the screen, see how that works? Awesome. All right, the next guy after that is Johannes Kepler. We got four, did I say five guys? It might be six guys. So we say got Aristotle, we got Copernicus, we got Brahe, we got Kepler, no, it's six guys. It's six guys. Newton, Isaac Newton, that's the next guy. And the last guy is Albert Einstein. So what you're going to do is you're going to look those guys up. I want you to find pictures of them because I don't want to look at a blank screen with, with text on it. I want to see a picture. And just got to give you guys an idea of what they, what they look like. And what I want you to tell me about them on each slide is just like a sentence or two. That's all I want. Um, so I'm going to have six slides all together, one slide on each guy, a sentence or two about each guy. And just tell me what did they contribute to the study of either orbital mechanics or planetary motion. Th those are going to be the terms you're going to find. Planetary motion is going to be what you're going to find most of the time, especially about Newton. So bringing up Newton, that's a good example. I don't want you to tell me all of their theories about everything. All right, so Isaac Newton, for instance, we've been dealing with him all year, right? We've had the three laws of motion. You have inertia, you have F equals MA, you have um, force. The, the third law is force pairs. I don't want to hear about those. Those have, I wouldn't say nothing to do with planetary motion, but those aren't what we're talking about in this unit. He's done more than just those things. I want you to tell me what he contributed specifically to orbital mechanics and planetary motion. And that's for all the guys. Another big one that you're going to find multiple theories for is Einstein. Kepler, yeah, you're pretty much just going to find orbital mechanics stuff on Kepler. But like Einstein, Newton, Aristotle, you're going to find a whole bunch of other stuff. And I don't want to hear about everything they did. I just want to hear about what their contributions to orbital mechanics are. Okay, so you're going to make that presentation. You're going to upload it onto the Google Classroom. That's it. It's due next Friday. And next Friday, I'll have another lesson up here just like this one, talking about um, the physics of orbital mechanics. And we're going to be talking about satellites around the Earth. And I want to give you a whole big thing about how orbits even work because it's kind of weird. All right, that's next Friday. So before then, um, hopefully I'm going to see everybody today when you check in with me on um, my Zoom meeting um, between the, the, the juniors are all going to, the junior, well, everybody's in this class. Some people are juniors. But we're just going to check in. After that, I really just need you to check in like once every two weeks. It, it can be just, hey, pop on, say, hey, Mr. Hare, I'm doing great. Assignment is going well. See you later. I just want to make sure that everybody's participating. Everybody's doing the distance education learning in all of their classes, well, in my classes. Okay, so everybody should get this turned in by next Friday, and then we'll do something else then. All right, talk to you later.